Thank you. Mm, I'm okay. Damn, always with this guy. What's the pin? Come prepare next time. It's time to get black, y'all. It's me, Craig Robinson, and I'm here to be your captain on a non-stop cross-country flight to the land of otherworldly blackness. And you've been upgraded to first class. Can I refill that mimosa playa? What's that, you ask? Is this flight going to Atlanta? I did say the land of otherworldly blackness, but no, it was merely a metaphor. To let you know what we have in store in this week's episode is the stuff of legends. An astrophysicist, a teenage filmmaker prodigy, and twin sisters who are changing the way we all see the world, literally. So sit back, relax, and let's enjoy together. <laughs> Been waiting for this. <laughs> so what? I got a few more things to do. I got to introduce the first piece before I can enjoy my favorite oxtails. Okay. Go, go, go. Non-equilibrium plasma sterilization of spacecraft materials, thermal fluid sciences, Jet Propulsion Planetary Protection Group. Y'all following me? Really? 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 Because I lost myself at plasma sterilization. Lucky for us, Dr. Muja Gay Cooper knows exactly what all of the above means. A BA in physics from Hampton University, a master's and PhD from Drexel, and currently a project lead on a top secret interplanetary mission, Dr. Cooper is showing that a career in the cosmos doesn't have to involve Billy Dee Williams, Chewbacca, or Baby Yoda. Let's see how she reached for the stars and is still very much amongst them. When I was a kid, my step-parents would bring us to the library and we were allowed to get one book and one video. One time I picked Carl Sagan's The Cosmos. I was in fifth grade and remember watching it and thinking, I want to be an astrophysicist. This is what I want to do. My classmate said, wow, you're crazy. How do you know? You haven't even taken a physics class. I know what I felt. I know what's in my heart. And if it changes, at least I reach for the stars. I'll land on the moon. <laughs> I couldn't wait, so I spent my summers going to school to get more classes in math and science. And I graduated from high school at 16, so I could rush off to college and get my PhD. On the first day of my internship at NASA Langley, I was dressed up head to toe. I had my little business suit on, or a 17-year-old's version of a business suit. <laughs> This was my dream. I was so excited. I was also putting a lot of pressure on myself to make a good impression. I came to realize, yes, it's serious to work for NASA, but everybody here is human and has a passion. And as long as you have a passion, you are very much accepted in the community as a scientist. What really inspires me is the long game. That big question, are we alone in this universe? And I love working on projects that try to understand are there biosignatures or life that used to exist on other planets like Mars? Can we bring samples back and analyze them and get a better idea of what used to be there? A lot of what I do focuses on not contaminating places where we're searching for signs of life. Because when we go and explore and try to understand other worlds, we want to leave them the way we found them making sure we don't change the biology of a place just because we were there. And that's what we call forward planetary protection. 
Backward planetary protection is when we bring samples back from the places that we're exploring. We have to protect our own planet because there may be unknown life forms that we're bringing back that may make us sick. That sounds a little scary, and it's human to be scared of the unknown. When I look at exploring space and I look at all of the unknowns, sometimes even I have to remind myself, don't resort to the primal reaction of being afraid. Be empowered, be curious, always be curious. As a scientist, there are a lot of situations where I have to stand up for my opinion, my scientific conclusion. There are a lot of questions that are posed to me that nobody knows the answer to. I'm the only one or my team is the only group of people that can really find a credible answer. Everything is based on facts, but you still have to interpret the data. And sometimes the conclusion is controversial. Are there situations where I feel like I'm doubted because I'm young? I'm young and black? I'm a young black woman? I wonder, would somebody else get that same treatment? Probably not, but I'm gonna work through it. I'm gonna get mission success. When I look up into the sky, I always look for my favorite constellation, my homeboy, Orion. It's very recognizable with its three-star belt and the little arms and Betelgeuse, which is the red giant. It's the most interesting constellation. I sometimes see a shooting star and think, is there something else out there? Is there some life maybe trying to make contact with us? Are they primitive and tiny and we just can't hear them yet? The big question of are we alone in the universe brings me back to fifth grade me. Infinitely curious, realizing there were so many questions and so much to learn. My goal in life is to inspire someone else the way Carl Sagan and other mentors inspired me. There will always be questions. There will always be obstacles. Create your own universe. I know who I'll be calling when I enter into that adult science fair next month. MySpace, ever heard of it? I still remember running to my desktop computer to see if at least one member from Destiny's Child was finally in my top eight. Shout out to Michelle. Bless her heart. Now, I bring up MySpace because our next profile is focused on two identical twin sisters, Coco and Breezy, who famously said in 2008 on their MySpace that they were visitors from the year 2020. Well, here we are, 2020, and based on how they're killing their craft, it's like they had a 12-year head start. From designing eyewear for Lady Gaga to the legend Prince himself, their imagination, focus, and familial bond has helped them navigate through the misconceptions and challenges of being young, black, female entrepreneurs. Nature sounds just puts me in a certain zone. I love thunderstorms. Hearing the wind is like amazing. I'm so emotional, I'll sketch some glasses and like point out like this is my tear. <laughs> yeah, she does do that. <laughs> if, if her tear falls on the sketch, she always does a little point. I do know that when people put our frames on, their personalities change. Absolutely. We've always been wearing a lot of jewelry since we were kids. <laughs> always been extra. Always. born in Indiana. We lived in the projects, and of course, our family wanted us to have a better life. And then from there, we moved to Minnesota, and that right there was a culture shock for us. Once our parents got divorced, our dad moved to a city called Chenhassen, and that's when we experienced racism. We had this feeling where we didn't really know our identities. We were trying to assimilate into an identity that we thought we had to be, but then we would come home with our mom being Puerto Rican and our dad being African American. He grew up during the civil rights era. He went to a segregated school. So we had a lot of culture and history in our family, but then going to school and people being like, oh, like, did you wash your hair? Oh, so you didn't wash your hair yesterday? Like, does that mean you didn't take a shower? Yes, I took a shower. I just don't wash my hair every day, you know? So I think that in that moment as a kid, 
It was very difficult, but now that I look back and I'm older, I'm actually happy that I went through that experience because I am who I am today because of that experience. Our parents really allowed us to exercise our creativity and what that felt like. But we kind of lived in our own like CMB world. No one else really mattered. Breezy is my little baby. That's my little sister by one minute. And she's the, the typical little sister that is really ambitious. But one thing that she has with her personality trait is that she's a go-getter and she gets what she wants. I think Coco is graceful and motherly, and she's an amazing leader. And so since she is very straightforward, almost like how a mom would be, it makes her a really great leader. It was so interesting because since we did grow up in the suburbs, like our parents and our family all called us Coco and Breezy and we thought it was ghetto. Because again, no one had nicknames growing up. There were names like Sally and like Becca. And when my parents would call us Coco and Breezy in front of our friends, I'm like, don't call me that, that that's ghetto. And now I'm like, I think back, it wasn't until we hit high school when we found our individual styles. And I'm like, you know what? We're gonna take our family name. We literally would always wear our glasses, inside, outside, dark, dark, the darkest club, couldn't see anything. I'm bumping to people. Yeah. <laughs> and so we went through this moment where we were like, hold on. So we're covering ourselves up with our glasses. We're covering ourselves up with our cool hairstyles. We're covering ourselves up with all this jewelry. How can we evolve? <laughs> We were growing so fast, but we never took the time out to figure out who we were as individuals, mm -hmm. even who we were without each other. And also- Oh, and at that time, we had never separated for more than 24 hours. You have to put yourself in an uncomfortable position to like find something new about who you are, or it has to be part of your journey. It's really beautiful how we've been able to figure out what each other's responsibilities should be because when we first started the company, we were attached at the hip. And I didn't know what I was good at without Coco. And she didn't know what she was good at without me. We started off with DIY. Like we were buying safety goggles, gluing studs and spikes on some glasses. And now we're going from ideation to sketch, to design, to CAD, to 3D printing, to overseeing and managing our production. And I'm like, wow, is this real? And we're doing all that in-house, no third parties, vertically integrated. We travel to the factory, oversee our production process, and it's amazing. You know, it's so interesting because when we were younger, we created our own safe space. And as we've grown as individuals, as adults, as creatives, as entrepreneurs, now we're making a safe space for others. We're taking on those challenges. We do need a space like this to step back and just stay grounded to make sure we have our, our heads straight and that we can continue our focus. But if we're not taking care of ourselves, we're gonna be a disservice to the world. When you're in a space where you're not filled with other energies and people, and you can just step outside, sit on the porch, stare at the trees like moving from the wind and look at a leaf fall down or look at the snow just cover the ground. It's a way of life. This year, it's not about asking, it's, it's about, about demanding. demanding. Yeah. It is demanding in a way where you cannot be afraid to ask for what you want. Especially when the goal is to make change and that's even through our brand, we're gonna do it. Our biggest goal is to show people, young or old, how to be true to themselves, how to love themselves, how to be comfortable with themselves. And the bigger part is how to do whatever the heck you want to do without thinking of what others are going to think of you. Coco and Breezy are so lucky to have each other. I wish I had an identical twin. Can you imagine two Craigs for the price of one? So much power. 
picture this. You're 19, you're in college. You leave your dorm room and walk down the street to collect the Founders Prize at the Tribeca Film Festival for your directorial debut for a film you happen to also write while you were in high school. This is not one of my pepperoni pizza induced fever dreams. This is what Philip Humans achieved last year for a story he conceived called Burning Cane. And this is where things get really interesting. My man didn't just want us to tell you his story. He wanted to tell another one of his stories. So he got in the lab and created an original piece for those little mouths and your eyeballs to feast on. Eat up, eyes. Students were inspired by Apollo 11. I was inspired by David Meltzer. Meltzer paints architectural diagrams. He's designed moon colonies, submarines, airplanes, farms, and rocket ships. Meltzer's future is pleasing to the eye, but devoid of any feeling. It simply exists. How can that be, you ask? I stared at a single painting for hours. It was like, meditating more. My father and mother have kept one foot in the future from the very start of their relationship. They were the first in their families to go to college, first to buy a house, and the first to leave the South. I asked my family to imagine the year 2020 through a black lens. I'll bet money that by 2020, a black woman will be president of the United States. invest in science and teleport from place to place. We will have robots. Not just any old kind of robot. The kind of robot that cleans your house. The kind of robot that cooks your breakfast. The kind of robot that plays your records. We will have a cure for sickle cell anemia and every other disease that disproportionately affects us. Artificial blood will be mass produced for transfusions.
I imagine that by 2020, all black people will have access to quality health care and insurance. In 50 years, we'll be entirely self-governed. We will decide what's best for our community through a direct democracy. Actually, Plan B, we'll colonize our own planet. A planet with no money, no war, no military, and no jet. musical language that only we can understand and enjoy. I'll be the first black woman to make music on the moon. To peace. I imagine a black moon colony. Okay, Philip, and my man shot it entirely on film. Legend. But yo, Philip, I'm gonna need you to cast me next time. My invite must have gotten lost in your drafts folder, right? Still love you, dude. So that's all the time we have today, y'all. Don't forget to tune in to next week's episode where we'll do it again with three new friends. And listen to the podcast where we dive even deeper into our stories. Check it out on iHeart or wherever you get your podcast fix. As always, don't be afraid to find what you love, share it with the world, and scream from the mountaintop. Your attention, please. What's up, y'all? It's me, Craig Robinson. Now listen, head over to Hulu and watch the full episodes of Your Attention, Please, hosted by yours truly. 
I promise your little minds will be blown when you see what we cooked up. Amazing stories about powerful new heroes and black culture out there killing it in spaces and places you won't even see coming. So go check it out and let us know what you think in the comments section. I'll be waiting. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Later.